Hi everyone and welcome back to the next video of this series. Today's video is about the throat chakra and this is the chakra that's associated with speaking your truth, speaking up for yourself from a place of love and it's also associated with listening and receiving information. So people with a blocked throat chakra tend to either be very quiet and keep themselves small or they're very outspoken and they really want to be seen but from this forceful way because they feel like they've never been seen or heard so they either keep themselves small because it's comfortable or they want to bring attention onto themselves for validation because they can't validate themselves and as always no judgment all of my chakras held these wounds so I've been there done that so there's never any judgment but sometimes if people have the chakra blocked they can't actually take information in because it has to be about them. They can't actively listen. You know, have you ever had a conversation with someone where you know that they're not listening to you? They're just waiting to talk so they can bring it back onto themselves. You know, they just want to speak and bring the focus back onto themselves because they don't feel seen and heard. So they use any opportunity as a way to be seen and heard, to be validated. So our soul has traveled through many lifetimes and this next bit, just take it if it resonates and if it doesn't, don't worry because everyone's journey is unique to them. But our soul has traveled through many, many, many lifetimes. So we pick up energetically where we left off. And remember, this is energetic. This isn't about words and actions because that's always rooted in the 3D. But your soul picks up energetically where it's left off. And for a lot of people who've got a blocked throat chakra, they will have lived a past life where their voice or speaking their truth equaled danger or in an extreme measure equaled their death. So again, take that if it resonates, leave it if it doesn't. I'm not going down this hippy dippy, yankee wanky doodle shy of, you know, new age, let's clear all these past lives and all of this shit. I'm not going down that road. I'm just talking about where we hold these energetic blocks and it can be from past lifetimes, especially when it comes to the throat chakra. That's just what I've seen and experienced myself. So like I said, take it if it resonates, leave it if it doesn't. But this could also play out in this lifetime. So that's why sometimes people have this intense fear of, you know, like speaking in public or just even speaking up for themselves and they don't know where it's come from. You know, they might have not had anything happen in this lifetime, which has caused that. They might have had a really happy childhood or, you know, nothing necessarily happened that would cause that block. So those are the people that I'm talking to. It can come from different lifetimes because remember your soul travels through time and space. It's not linear. So if you held something in a past lifetime, you can hold it in this lifetime too. So that's just for people who have a really badly blocked throat chakra, because that was definitely the case for me. But also look at this lifetime because it could have happened in childhood. You could have shut down your throat chakra in your childhood because it could also have played out in a way that speaking up for myself equals something bad will happen to me. And, you know, it's not, it doesn't have to be something extreme, but it might have been unsafe for you to speak up or speak your truth as a child. But also look at this lifetime, you know, look at your childhood. Was it safe for you to speak up or speak your truth or just even speak up for yourself? You know, did speaking up for yourself mean something bad would happen? Was it safe for you to speak your truth? Because if it wasn't, it causes you to operate from this fight or flight. And again, this chakra is also related to the father wound and fight or flight is a symptom of the father wound. So again, remember this isn't about slating anyone's parents or being in this victim mode. It's about taking accountability and knowing that we chose our parents because we knew that they would reflect the blocks that our soul wanted to work through in this lifetime. So everything was planned by your soul. This isn't about slating your mum, slating your dad and, you know, 
feeling like something happened to you that you can't overcome. This is just about knowing that the father wound and the mother wound is just a cluster of energetic shit that we need to work through and it manifests in different ways through the mum and the dad. So as I said, fight or flight is a symptom of the father wound. And remember, we absorb our core denied shadow self from our parents. So we essentially absorb our fear-based energy from our parents, which then plays out on the twin flame journey, which is why I keep mentioning the mother wound and the father wound. Again, I know I've said it a few times in this series, but if you want a video on the mother wound and father wound, please let me know because I'm more than happy to do that. Okay, so people with a blocked throat chakra, they often need stimulation. They need sound, they need music playing, they need, they need the TV on or people talking. Some people need the TV on because their dogs have weird anxiety, so don't start attacking me. I know the TV is on in most of my videos and it really offends people because, <laughs> you know, having your TV on is just, let's face it, it's the crime of the century. But I was guilty of this, you know, needing stimulation because... I didn't want to feel the discomfort internally. You know, noise is a distraction. People who need that stimulation, people who need music on all the time or just some background noise, it's because they don't want to process the internal chaos because it's painful. You know, and if your other chakras are blocked, if you've watched the other videos in this series, it often feels unsafe for these people with this block the throat chakra it feels unsafe for them to feel so they don't want to listen to the internal chaos they don't want to listen to the noise that they carry within their own internal world so you know look at if you need stimulation look at if you how does it feel if there was no noise around you what would your internal dialogue be you know what would the chaos within feel like to you you don't have to go there it's just a question to reflect on to see if this is, you know, one of the, the blocks that you carry in your throat chakra. So another thing is people who carry the blocks in the throat chakra, they can be very loud people, not always, but these are the people that don't wanna listen. They speak over other people. They need to fill in the gaps of a conversation. So they just keep going because if there's a gap, it's awkward and they feel, vulnerable and it's not safe for them to feel those things so they have to keep going and keep filling the silence and they don't let other people speak either again have you ever been around someone or even been someone who feels awkward and uncomfortable with silence that's because silence it doesn't hold a distraction for our internal chaos so silence is very uncomfortable and again i was guilty of this so as always, and I know I keep saying it, but there's never any judgment. So these people, they can't actively listen because they think they know it all. You know, they're not open to external input because they think external input is a criticism. They think that it's someone calling them stupid or someone saying, well, you don't know enough, so let me tell you. They, they take it as an attack. And again, this is part of the father wound. So... They think that they know it all and they're closed off from external input. You know, sometimes people pay for a private call with me or they join my course and we have our private calls and they just don't stop speaking, which is fine. That's fine. That's what you're here for, to speak and tell me what, what you need advice on and where we need to shift you. But they do it in a way where they keep speaking because they don't want to listen to me. They don't want to be coached. So... They pay for a call, they'll go through the course, but they don't want to take it in because they either just want to argue or throw a pity party or say, you know, I don't resonate with anything because I can't be fixed or, you know, they, they're in that sort of mindset. Again, I'm not judging anyone because I know there's people who have been through that who might be watching this. This is not an attack on you at all. If you are one of those people, you know, we've worked through that block already, so don't take that as an attack. But that's okay. But again, these are the people that don't tend to shift because they're not allowing themselves to. It takes a lot of work to shift them because they don't want to shift. And that's okay because everywhere, everyone is where they're meant to be. But these are the people who 
They don't want to shift because it's scary to them. It's not safe for them. And that's because these lower chakras aren't rooted into place either. So they just want to keep talking and talking and talking and think they know it all. Because if they know it all, they're safe. And again, your push energy doesn't want you to learn anything new. Not that you're learning. This is more of a resonance because you know everything within. But your push, your push energy doesn't want you to remember your truth because that's when you balance it out. It doesn't want to be balanced out. So if you are someone that is not open to external input, you might hold that block in your throat chakra. And again, that is heavily linked to the father wound. So that's something you might want to look at. So the ones that might act this way, they may have learned as a child that to be seen and heard and to get attention, they had to be loud or speak over others or make noise to be noticed. They learned that they weren't enough just as they were. They feel very unseen and unheard as a child. And then that continues into adulthood. Remember, like I've said in my other videos in this series, even if something is in the past, if it's still active in your energy field, it's still very much present, which is why dealing with childhood from an energetic perspective is key on this journey because it dissipates the energetic blocks to self-love, which is what this journey is about. So these people might have also, and again, this relates to people who keep themselves small as well. They might have also learned that they need to overpower others or overtake others to be noticed. You know, they have to be the best at everything. They tend to hold the perfectionist wound as well. They need to be the best at everything because if they fall short, then they're not good enough. And if you hold the fear of being seen and you hold the fear of being replaced as well, so you have to make your presence known or someone else is going to threaten your position and this plays out a lot on the twin flame journey people think that someone's going to come and steal their twin flame away because they hold these blocks so because they have this fear of being replaced they have to make their presence known and these people they need attention and they need to be heard and again that's not an attack of like oh you need so much attention it's not a judgment it's just that's what these people have learned as a child that they need to be seen by others or they'll just disappear. So like I said, it ultimately comes down to the fear of being replaced, which cycles back to the fear of abandonment. And this is what your push energy hooks into with your twin flame. This limiting story that you're not enough as you are and that you'll be forgotten and replaced. But you, you can never, ever, ever, ever be replaced when it comes to your twin flame. I just want to say that here. And you can never, ever be forgotten. Even if 10 years pass, your twin flame will never forget about you and can never replace you. But it's still blocks that we need to transmute. So people who feel unseen and unheard, they tend to bring the noise. Not all of them, but some of them. And again, I'm just explaining the chakras and the energy in the chakras that we hold from my own experience and from what I've seen with other people. So if it doesn't 100% resonate, just know that your journey is unique to you. But I personally had to bring the noise. And I used to do this in a way where I wouldn't be really loud in conversations or, you know, have to overpower other people. But I did it in a way where I used to drive around really fast and play really loud music because in some way it made me feel above others. Like, oh, I've got a faster car than you or you know, I'm playing really loud ghetto music and you're not. And it just, it was a stupid story that my push had. And it's because if I was loud, if my presence was known, if you could hear my car from a million miles away and this loud thumping music, the attention goes on to you and you feel in that moment, in a split second, like you're worthy of something because the attention's on you. And I felt it made me feel less invisible until I totaled an RS6 and felt like a first class twat. But you know that it was just a temporary high of, oh, people are looking at me and noticing me because I felt unseen and unheard. So this is how it will manifest in that, I wouldn't say toxic way, but please ignore them noises in the background. My dog has this thing where she likes to choke on water, but it manifests in this wounded way where you need to put the attention on you because 
you can't see you. But it all comes down to feeling invisible, feeling like we're unworthy, feeling like we won't be seen and we won't be heard, which is why when our twin flame situation goes to shit and we'd finally felt seen and heard for the first time in our lives, when the twin flame then leaves, that abandonment, I keep putting these in quotation because they're never really leaving or abandoning you, but it just triggers those feelings of being left and abandoned. But that abandonment feeling is then heightened because we felt invisible in some way throughout our whole lives. And then our twin flame comes along and everything is just intensified. And because they are our soul, it just feels more painful. So it's because we've always felt invisible. It's not like this is the first time it's happened to us. And then all that shit, all the times we felt invisible, it just intensifies and it all erupts, <laughs> you know, the joy of the twin flame journey. So look at where you felt invisible, look at where you felt unseen and unheard in your life. And, you know, look back to your childhood. Where did you first feel these things? And remember, this does tie into the father wound. So look at your relationship with your dad and times that you felt unseen and unheard and where it was unsafe to speak your truth. So that's, you know, a good place to start, to start shifting these things. And I also want you to look back on times where you might have overcompensated to be accepted or validated. You know, did you learn that as a child? What was the feeling underneath that? You know, did you have to go the extra mile? Did you have to go above and beyond to get acceptance? Did you learn that to get love, I have to be perfect? And look at the feeling underneath that. Was it rejection? Was it abandonment? Was it the fear of being replaced? And this can tie in a lot to being overshadowed by a sibling. But of course, it's unique to everybody. And once you've started to look at those areas, you can then see how your twin flame reflects this energy back to you when they're being a yankee wanky sack of shit. You know, when they're rejecting you, ignoring you, abandoning you, when they're just not seeing you. Sometimes when our push is built up so high, it feels like we become invisible to our twin flame because we hold these blocks in the throat chakra. We don't see ourselves. We feel like we're just shrinking and eventually we're going to disappear. You know, that's how I felt anyway, but maybe I was just really dramatic. So just look at how you might have overcompensated or how you might have tried to gain acceptance and validation in your childhood and obviously pinpoint what was underneath that because we want to get right to the root on this journey. You know, we want to look at if it was rejection, abandonment, we want to get right to the root, not just the behaviours. Because once we transmute the root, the behaviours start to change. So how else can we open up the throat chakra? You can create an environment to feel loved and safe and meet your own needs. You know, and this doesn't have to be some extreme spiritual thing of crystals and sage everywhere. And you can do that, you know, whatever floats your boat, do what's right for you. But it's about taking small steps in the right direction. You know, like I would just start to be in the moment and feel that love and safety in my own home with my dogs cooking for myself. I know I pay my own bills and I know that I'm relying on me in that moment. It was taking those tiny baby steps to show yourself and to, you know, undo all these stories that I can see myself in this moment and I'm doing a good job. I can start to validate myself in this moment. And like I said, it's just the tiny little things. We want to take the twin flame journey day to day. It doesn't have to be some massive thing like, oh, I, you know, did something that has changed the world and you know, I'm on this mission now and I'm ascending so high that I'm affecting so many people. It doesn't have to be something like that. There's again, this misconception that to be, to feel worthy and validated on the twin flame journey, you have to do some weird fucking earthly mission that's going to help millions of people. No, you can start to validate yourself in your day-to-day -day life. Like, oh, I got out of bed when I felt, felt suicidal. <laughs> Validating myself, tick. You know, it's taking the tiny little steps day to day to start seeing that you are worthy and that seeing yourself and accepting yourself and, as I've said, validating yourself. And doing that, it starts to 
move this stuck energy of feeling unworthy and feeling invisible. And when we can start to do it for ourselves, no one can take that away from us. We start removing the need from needing it externally, other people telling us how great we are, other people telling us how worthy we are. We start to validate ourselves. And when we get there within, that's when everything shifts because we're really trusting ourselves instead of our external circumstances. Also take note as well that the throat chakra relates to your solar plexus chakra. So if you haven't watched that video, feel free to, but it connects to seeing yourself. You know, do you know who you truly are as a soul? And this is the shift that you have to make to balance your energy anyway and bring your twin flame back in. So you may as well get a head start on that. But, you know, all the chakras are interlinked. Everything is connected. So the throat chakra also connects to the heart chakra. If your heart is open or closed, it will relate to how your throat chakra is. If your heart is closed off, then your throat chakra tends to be closed as well. But as you open the heart, the throat chakra tends to open up as well. You know, I made another video about the heart chakra, but people who have a closed heart are often the ones who get really angry and shout to protect themselves. You know, they use their throat chakra to protect their heart. So they have to attack others and shout and be loud and come across as really aggressive because it keeps them from feeling unsafe. And those with an open heart, they can be silent and they can be vulnerable because they do feel safe. They know that nothing and no one can threaten them, you know, emotionally or physically, because they know who they are. That's where we need to get you to. And that's the space that you need to be for your twin flame to come back in anyway. This isn't about, you know, constantly blaming them and feeling sorry for yourself. And again, I know this journey is hard. I'm not saying I'll oh, just get over it but we have to shift the perspective on this. So if you do need help doing that, my course is still on sale until the 5th of November. Um, my childhood energetic course as well, there's that with the mother wound and father wound work if you want help on that. I hope this has resonated, I hope this has helped and I'll see you in the next video of this series which is the third eye chakra.